One of software's most powerful features is around their action buttons, letting your users take different actions with complex business logic inside of your internal applications. When it comes to software's actions, I typically think of this in three different categories. So for one, we have our CRUD operations, create, read, update, and delete. Things like adding records, editing records, a one-click update, and deleting records. And then we have more navigational items, things like opening a page, opening a details page, opening a specific URL, and scrolling. And then we have these really powerful utilities, such as Software's new Call API feature, allowing you to create and extend additional business logic in tools like Make and Zapier. And we can also download files. If you haven't gotten started with Software yet, you can use the code in the description below for a free month off of Software's Pro Plan. Hi, I'm Dan Lehman from AutomationHelpers.com, and we help companies like yours get automated with portals, apps, and integrations. For today's examples, we're going to be doing this with a client portal template, so you can find that in the description below if you want to follow along as well. And we're going to use these examples specifically with invoices. So there's a page for invoices already created. I'm on this and software has visibility rules around the different blocks. So on this page already, there's actually two different blocks that look really similar. There's one for my invoices and one for all invoices. And these are really similar. The main difference being that for my invoices, if we go over to our visibility settings, this is going to be for clients and we can check in our source. And this is going to be so that a client can only see their own invoices. And then down below, we have a block for all invoices, and the visibility there is set for the admins. And so some of what we're going to do with the conditional logic for the buttons themselves could actually be done in a slightly different way if you only had one of these blocks displaying, but the template actually has these two blocks for us already. So let's say for our first button, we want our admin to be able to create new invoices. This, of course, is not something that we want our clients to be able to do. We just want our admin. So I'm going to scroll down to the block that we have for all invoices, which is already scoped for our admin directly, and we'll click on this actions tab. And this is what we're going to always be clicking on anytime that we're interacting with our actions. You'll notice that there's three main different areas where we can add these action buttons. One is for the top bar, one is for the item buttons, and then we also have items on click. So for top bar buttons, what that means is that we're going to see a little button over here on the side that displays at the top. This is going to be used really well for navigational type items. Let's take a look at these options. We've got open page, scroll to open URL. And then kind of the unique one to this set is that we're going to be adding a record. And this is the step that we're going to take because this is how we want to create a new invoice. Let's click that button. And you can see this now adds the button to add record. We could change the wording of this. I prefer create invoice in this case. And now we have the option to map our different fields. And this is going to be mapped to our different fields that we have in Airtable for this particular case. This is going to work with your different data sources. You might be using something other than Airtable like Google Sheets or HubSpot. So I'm going to change this payment status. Instead of having them set it, we'll set that automatically in the background. But let's change this to actually point at our project. We'll change some of our settings to again call this invoice, change this to create and we can have our success message. And now check out how easy this is to actually preview this in action. We can click our preview button up at the top, and now we're able to see what this looks like to our users. So up at the top, I've already selected this to have Charles, who's our admin, because he's the one who's going to be creating these invoices. Now, if we click on a client like Lisa, then we see my invoices, which of course doesn't have that button, but if I click back on Charles, our admin, he now sees all invoices along with this button to create a new invoice. We can click on that. And now we've got all of our fields. So this is mapped to our projects. We could put in the costs and the other fields that we need in order to create this. Simply click the button to create it and we're good to go. Now, like I mentioned before, this all invoices block is only visible to Charles as an admin. But let's pretend for a second that all invoices was available for everyone to see. And yet that action we wanted to be able to restrict so if we click back into the actions and then we click here, this button for that create invoice, we can now determine who specifically is allowed to see this. So of course, only logged in users. Then we can get even more granular here and say only admins are allowed to actually see this button, which will allow them then to create that record. Now, let's say you want to change the look and the feel of that button a little bit. That's no problem. You can hover over the button and you can see there's this paintbrush icon. This will take us here where we could do something like change the color of that button if we want it to be green here instead. Or if we want to change the stylings of the top bar buttons in general, we could do that. Again, there's a paintbrush icon 
next to top bar buttons, and that will allow us to do things like change the margin or the alignment. Okay, for our next example, let's talk about what happens when we actually click on an item. So we're gonna go to this My Invoices block. We'll click on that and head over to our actions once again. And here you can see in the template, there's already a button for paying the invoice. I'm actually gonna delete that one for a second because we're gonna talk about a different mechanism by which we could pay the invoice. But let's take a look at this item on click. So right now we're on this list with horizontal sliding cards. And if I'm logged in as Dominica, who is one of our clients, we can see there's multiple invoices that she has. And when she clicks on one of these items, it's going to expand that record so we can see the details of what's included with that invoice. And that's exactly what this expand action does out of the box. Instead, we could do other things like do nothing, but a use case we might want to do is to actually open up a details page for this if we want to see all the details of the invoice and have it actually navigate us to that page. So instead of expand, we could open up a details page. I'm not gonna create a details page right now, but we'd be able to create that and send the user there as opposed to just expanding. So anytime we talk about item on click, it's talking about this whole div or the container for this. We can click on that and then take some sort of follow-up action. Next, let's add some item buttons to make it easier to interact with our invoices for our end clients. Here under our actions, we have our item buttons. Let's add an item button to actually download the file of the invoice itself. We can choose a file link and an Airtable that corresponds with this attachments field with this invoice. So back in Softer, we will map this to the invoice and we can change this to invoice downloaded. Now when Dominica expands this invoice, she'll see an option here to download that invoice, which is going to actually download that file. Okay, so what should we do if we want the user to take a much more advanced action, something like actually making a payment against their invoice? Well, there is a Stripe integration for Softer, but in this case, let's just say we're gonna use QuickBooks or some other application. So we're inside of Zapier and we could say, let's start off with a trigger and our trigger is going to be webhooks by Zapier. We're gonna choose an event. This is going to be a catch hook. We'll press continue. And now this will give us a URL that we can copy. And now back in software, let's add a new item button. So we have the one for downloading the invoice. Let's add a new item button. And this is going to be to use the call API, this newer feature for software. Now we're just gonna talk about this high level today, but if you're more interested in this feature, check out our other video on the call API feature if you wanna get more into the details. We'll click on Call API. From here, we can paste in our URL for Zapier. And I should say we're using Zapier for this example, but you could use any kind of service that allows webhooks. And instead of this label for Call API, we'll change it to Pay Invoice. And then we could send some other information as necessary by using some key value pairs where we're actually sending data from that item itself, from that particular invoice. Then in Zapier, we could search for whatever other applications we want to use, and we could take an action like creating a new invoice record inside of QuickBooks or creating a new payment that we're logging against that invoice record. But an interesting thing that we can do actually in Softer is talk about the visibility setting for that button. So before we talked about visibility based on our role or our user group, but I could go into the visibility settings here and we could add a condition, and this is based on the actual data of the record. So here we could choose a field and let's scroll down to our payment status. And we'll say we only want to give that option to pay an invoice if the status is actually open. So in this case, it'll be a custom value that we add of open, but you could also take information about the logged in user if that was pertinent for your use case. Let's add that custom value. So now when Dominica is looking at her invoices, she's got a couple of them that are paid. So if we open up a paid invoice, we only see that option to download the invoice itself. But if we were to open up this invoice with a status of open, this is where we're going to see the different options that we have, including paying that invoice. And all of this conditional logic that we have alongside of our actions in software is what makes it so powerful. Now, speaking of powerful, I'm about to let you in on a little secret here. Software is planning on creating their own in-app native experiences to build your own workflows. So if you've been looking forward to building more powerful automations directly inside of software, this is something that's on the roadmap. I don't know exactly about the timeline yet, but software said it was okay to share this information. So this is something that we're really looking forward to. Now, the last example here I wanna talk about is really simple, but super powerful. So it's one of my favorites inside of software. Let's talk about that admin again, who is in charge of creating the invoices. And the admin might also receive calls on the phone to collect payments for invoices. So he might be manually putting this information in. So instead of having several buttons and forms and things he has to go through, he just wants to update this to say, yeah, they paid the invoice. So to do this, let's click on all invoices here and go to our actions. 
And you'll notice that we've got this option to mark as paid. And when this template was initially set up, it was set up as this edit record option and it opens up this modal with a whole bunch of options. Let's go ahead and change this action. And instead we're going to use the one click update and we'll add a field here for the payment status and we'll replace the existing value and we'll put in this value of paid. And now let's add a field and I'm gonna choose due date. We should probably have a different field that we actually call payment date, but we don't have that in the template. So we're just gonna use due date. We'll replace the existing value. And then if we click the value here, look at all of these different dynamic values that we could use. So we could have a URL parameter that we're collecting from the page or something in the page URL. In this case, we're just gonna choose the current time and use the current date and time. And let's scroll up here and we'll change this from update to mark as paid. And again, let's go into our button visibility and we'll add a condition and we'll say only if the status is open. Now, if we're logged in as Charles, the admin, and we scroll down and we see all of these different invoices, if he opens up this one that's already been paid, we can view the payment. Or if we open up this existing one, we can mark it as paid, single click, and that's going to update that information about the invoice in just a single click. I hope this has been helpful to see just how powerful Softer's actions can be. If you have any questions about Softer, don't hesitate to reach out on our website at automationhelpers.com, where we're offering free 30-minute consultations. 